What comes to mind when you think of Chinese food? Dumplings. Noodles. A sweet and sour pork. Lemon chicken. Delicious. You'll find these staples at any Chinese takeaway. But if you look a little closer, menus can be vastly different from restaurant to restaurant. So what does Chinese food mean now? Up until the late 1980s, most of what Australians understood Chinese food to be was actually Cantonese cuisine, which was sometimes turned into fast food. A lot of the food culture in Australia had, had kind of done a dance between preserving traditional Cantonese food styles and then also needing to cater to Western customers. Cantonese cuisine became the backdrop for Australia-China trade diplomacy during the 1980s and 1990s, at a time when Westerners were beginning to understand Chinese culture. These days, diners are more discerning. When Lu Gan was a university student, she opened a restaurant to serve authentic food from her hometown in Lanzhou. And I had a lot of international student friends, and they're always asking, oh, where are the good Asian food, where the hometown food? One of her dishes that's taken off in Australia is Lanzhou beef noodles. It comes from northwest China, where its dry climate makes it hard to grow fresh vegetables and rice. So there's plenty of root veggies and wheat noodles. To get the authentic noodles, Lu brought over chefs from her hometown skilled in hand pulling noodles. All seven kinds. So for a lady like me, I would love the thinnest, but a lot of uh, men in Lanzhou, they like the chewiness of the noodle and they don't like the noodle to be too soft or too tender. But she won't find a Chinese classic like sweet and sour pork at a Lanzhou restaurant. That's because it was a gateway city on the Silk Road that connected Central Asia to China. So with a big Muslim population, pork is out and lamb skewers are in. Another cuisine that's taken hold in Australian cities is Sichuan hot pot. But Oscar Zhao remembers a time when they were hard to find. Around 10 years ago, so when we just arrived here, we saw not that many hot pot restaurants. Only around two or three, I tried all of them with my classmates, but it's not that good. That's why we think it's a very perfect opportunity for us to open a real Chinese hot pot restaurant here, like a real Sichuan cuisine here. At the start, most of his customers were Chinese migrants and tourists. But now many Aussies are swapping honey chicken for a hot pot. But they don't always get it. What kind of restaurant makes you cook your own food? A lot of customers, they might confused and ask why we have to pay to cook our own hot pot in the restaurant. Over the time, so we've seen a increasing number of the customers from the local, especially the young people, because young people there are eager to try some new things and experience. Known for its punchy flavors, fresh ingredients, and liberal use of spice, it's hard to overestimate the influence of Sichuan cuisine in Chinese cooking. It's hailed as one of the four great cuisines along Shandong, Cantonese, and Jiangsu. But why are all the regional cuisines starting to become mainstream in Australia? Historian Sophie Loy Wilson says the most recent renaissance in Chinese food has been fueled by the migration of international students and their families who are wealthier than previous migrants. And even though Australian palates are expanding, they're not needed to sustain demand. There's a whole ecosystem of agents, university recruiters, and they wine and dine everyone that comes out here. The other final big shift I would really emphasize, it's not just the migration of bodies, it's the migration of food technologies via social media. And this is just the latest example of culinary exchange dating back to the 19th century gold rush. When migrants from Guangdong in southeastern China arrived in Australia, they brought seeds to grow veggies, rice, and cooking utensils. When they got to a strange land, the first thing they would do is to plant vegetables. When they ate what the Chinese produced from their camps, I think very soon the Chinese were conscripted to be cooks in their camps. I think the love of Chinese food began there. Besides eating for pleasure, Cantonese food was arguably born out of necessity when Aussie miners were subsisting on mutton and damper. Being a miner is bloody hard. You're more likely to survive if you get better nutrition. So the Cantonese diet, you know, included better nutrition. But Cantonese cuisine is no longer the juggernaut it once was. Other regional cuisines began competing with it when Chinese migrants arrived after World War II and the Tiananmen Square Massacre. Our son, our grandsons, will live in this land. Our home is here. 
Australia. While Elizabeth is excited about the evolution of Chinese food, she's also nostalgic for Cantonese culinary techniques and delicacies that aren't passed down through the generations. The food is now being given over, not to the inherited families, as it was in the early days, but to the new people arriving from Asia. There's going to be a fresh new look, a changing of the guard. A younger brigade, because the old traditional chefs, their children have not wanted to carry on. I can't work out myself exactly which direction Asian food will be going. But Australia itself is such a rich multicultural country that the food has to follow that as well, doesn't it?